will now discuss um, uh, models that arise in physics and biology. In particular, uh, where ODEs become an essential tool uh, in modeling uh, various processes. And uh, first, uh, let's look at the following uh, situation. Uh, suppose that we have uh, a dish. Uh, if I look at it from the top, um, and that dish has some bacterial culture in it. Uh, then we know that uh, the bacteria is going to uh, divide, uh, multiply, and uh, the population is going to grow with time. And that is, uh, the goal is to uh, whether or not, to figure out whether or not we will be able to predict how many bacteria are going to be in a dish at uh, some arbitrary time t. Uh, so, to make, think, to make things more precise, let's uh, make some assumption. So, assume uh, that uh, there are n0 bacteria in the dish at the time 0. And uh, the goal Uh, find is to find uh, the number of bacteria in the dish at time t. All right. So, uh, let's do this. Let's denote uh, the number of bacteria in the dish at time t uh, by n of t. Uh, so right now, n of t is an unknown function. Uh, the only thing that we do know about n of t uh, is this. So... So, however, n of zero, right, the initial population of bacteria is known, and that is uh, n zero. Okay, um, so a couple more things here. So, in principle, uh, n of t. Uh, should be integer values, right? Because we expect that the number of bacteria in a dish should be an integer. Uh, however, if the number of bacteria is uh, very large, uh, then having one or more or one less bacterium really is not going to change anything. Uh, so, for a large number of bacteria, we can pretend that n of t 
is uh, actually a continuous function which you can have any uh, real value uh, with understanding that uh, we're not going to know the exact number of bacteria, but uh, we're going to approximate the number of bacteria in a dish with very high accuracy because if I get a value 1 million point one bacterium, then I know that roughly speaking I have 1 million bacteria in a dish. And that is a pretty high accuracy because at that uh, large population, having one more or one less bacterium is, is really irrelevant. So, however, well, we can assume Uh, that n of t is um, real valued if n of t is large. Okay. So uh, then we're looking for uh, our standard real, real valued function. Uh, about which we don't really know anything at this point, besides, again, the fact that uh, n of 0 is equal to n0. Okay, so we need to uh, then figure out some properties of uh, how the bacterial population evolves, uh, which will allow us to determine n of t. And so what do we know about... Uh, possible behavior of the population of bacteria. Uh, so, from practical observations, we know uh, that evolution of bacterial population is going to Uh, satisfy the following criteria. So, uh, let me list those. So, number one, uh, what do we know about the rate of change in the number of bacteria? Uh, if we're talking about the bacterial growth, uh, we do expect that um, uh, n of t is increasing. And number two, uh, because each bacteria subdivides, or each bacteria is multiplying that means uh, that the rate of growth of the number of bacteria in a dish should depend on the bacterial population. The more bacteria you have, the faster the bacterial population is going to grow. And again, because each bacteria multiplies, roughly speaking, with the same rate, so we'll, we'll expect that the rate of growth uh, that the rate of growth of N of T should increase with N of T itself. Uh, and in fact, uh, it should be proportional to N of T. Okay. And this second item is actually crucial here. 
So let's suppose um, so if we suppose that the coefficient of proportionality is k, Uh, and then we know that the rate of change, uh, that the rate of change of a bacterial population is a derivative of n with respect to time. So then we should get that n prime of t should be k times n of t, right? Again, rate of growth of a bacterial population is proportional to the number of bacteria. Uh, and because of the item one here, that the number of bacteria is increasing, if you're trying to describe the bacterial growth, so then a k must be a coefficient which is uh, greater than zero. In principle, I guess it can be equal to zero, in which case there is no growth at all, right? So, because then n prime of t is going to be equal to zero. All right, so then uh, what have we got? Uh, we got the following, we need to solve the following problem. So to find n of t, we need to solve the problem n prime, I'm going to drop writing of t, n prime is equal to kn, n of 0 is equal to n0. And notice that the equation that I wrote is actually nothing but uh, uh, your linear equation. Linear first order body. All right. So at this point, we do know how to solve an OD like this. Uh, and so we can find a solution. So if n prime is equal to kn, uh, then we have that n prime, n prime minus kn is equal to zero. So this linear already is in a standard form. So then I can find the integrating factor mu of t. This is equal to e to the power integral of uh, the function which is a coefficient of n. In this case, this function is minus k, so it's e to the minus k dt. Integrate e to the minus k, you get minus kt. So the integrating factor e to, is e to the minus kt. And then if you multiply your equation by e to the minus kt by the integrating factor, the left-hand side times the unknown function derivative of that should be the right-hand side times the integrating factor, but uh, zero times the integrating factor is zero, so that is zero. So that means that e to the minus kt uh, times n is equal to a constant, or if I multiply both sides by e to the minus kt, n of t is c e to the kt. So I solved my ODE, so now I can use the initial condition. And if I use the initial condition, n of 0 on one hand must be equal to n0, but on the other hand, it is this expression that I uh, figured out, evaluated at t equal to 0. So c e to the 0, which is actually c. So c is n0, and therefore the solution to my initial value problem is n of t equal to n0 e to the power kt. All right, so that means that the population of bacteria, bacteria actually in this case evolves exponentially in time. So, population, let's write this down. 
Uh, oh, bacteria. Evolves. Exponentially. In time. All right, so now if I want to uh, solve a practical problem, uh, let's say, let's do an example like this. I suppose that there are initially Uh, 1,000 bacteria in the dish. Uh, then the question is, how many bacteria are there at, uh, let's say, at t equal to 10 days. Well, so, but this case, in this case, I actually don't need to solve any of these because I already know that the population of bacteria is going to satisfy my linear OD, the solution of which is going to look like uh, the expression that I circled here. So then what I do know is that n of t here is going to be what? n0 is 1000, so it should be 1000 times e to the power k times, and if I measure time in days, in fact, uh, let's, let's write the general expression first. Uh, e to the k times t, where again t is going to be number measured in day, uh, time measured in days. Uh, but you see that the problem now is uh, I have no idea what k is. So question is, how do we find k? Uh, for practical purposes, k is needed, but experimentally, where would I get it? Because k is just some coefficient that I uh, said should be there because the uh, rate of growth of a population of bacterium is proportional to the population itself. So what would be a reasonable way to find k? Uh, typically, what is accessible to you experimentally? So let's say... I know how many bacteria I put in addition initially. And maybe I have some means by which I can count the bacteria that are in the dish after um, one day. So that will provide me an additional data point that I might try to use to figure out what K is. Let's see how we can do that. So let's suppose that we also know Uh, and the following that there are two thousand bacteria in a dish. Let's say after one hour. So can I deter can I use that information to figure out the value of k? So can we use this information to find k? Uh, 
Uh, the answer is yes. And let's see how. So what do I know? I know that n, uh, so first of all, since I said everything is going to be measured in days, uh, then one hour is equal to one or 24, 24 for the day, right? And so then what we know is that n of 1 over 24, that should be 2,000, right? But on the other hand, we know that n of 24 should be still determined from this expression. So it should be 1,000 times e to the power k times 1 over 24, so k over 24. So from that, what are we getting? If we divide both sides by 24, I have e to the k over 24 is equal to 2. And it actually would be easier to determine e to the k instead of uh, k. And you will see in a second why. So if I determine e to the k, uh, writing e to the k over 24 is the same thing as writing e to the k to the power 1 over 24, that is equal to 2. And then if I raise both sides to the power 24, then e to the k should be 2 to the power uh, 24. Uh, whatever it is, it doesn't matter to me at this point what uh, number 2 to the power 24 is. It's a fairly large number. Uh, how can I use it in my expression above? So what do we have? We have that n of t is uh, 1000 e to the kt. And I can play the same trick as I just did with e to the k. So this is 1000. e to the kt, I can write as e to the k to the power t, because raising something to the power and then to another power is raising that thing to the product of two powers. And at this point, I know what e to the k is. It's 2 to the 24th. So this would be 1,000 times 2 to the 24th to the power t. And again, I can distribute the powers or combine the powers. So this is 1,000 times 2 to the 24t. OK, so then there are no unknowns left in my expression. So I can conclude that n of t is 1,000 times 2 to 24t, <clears throat> and, 20, and t is, uh, that I was interested in, is 10 days, so n of 10 should be 1,000 times 2 to 240. Right, because I have 24 uh, times 10. And clearly, 2 to the power 240 is going to be a large number. So this is a very large number. So we'll have a huge number of bacteria after 10 days. And in a few minutes, we're going to discuss actually what that might signify. Uh, let's do another example. And we're going to talk about the notion of half-life. Uh, actually, let's not do this yet. Uh, Instead, let's look at the following. 
so when I have my function n of t, right, the principal difficulty when you're going to try to solve a practical problem is going to be knowing what k is. But we said that I can always figure out what k is by measuring the number of bacteria, not just at the initial time, but at some other time. So in this example, uh, we used uh, one hour, right, after the initial time as a next data point. Uh, but typically people, uh, or sometimes people might specify the time after the number of bacteria will double. Well, actually, this is exactly what we have here, right? Because uh, in the beginning, we had 1,000 bacteria, right? And after one hour, we have uh, 2,000 bacteria. So that means that one hour is an amount of time that it takes bacteria to double. Uh, clearly, if this number is bigger, then the rate of growth of bacteria is smaller. So if the amount of time that it takes bacteria to double is one hour, uh, then the bacteria growth rate is going to be higher than if the amount of time it takes bacteria to double is one day. So uh, we're going to talk about this number T2. I'm going to denote it by T2, capital T2. Uh, so suppose that T2 is the time it takes uh, the number of bacteria to double. And as I just said, the larger this number is, the slower uh, the bacterial population is going to grow. So that means that there is a relationship between T2 and K. And I want to figure out exactly what that relationship is. So I want to find a connection. Uh, between T2 and K. Well, so let's say, um, what do we get? We get that uh, because N of T is equal to N0 e to the power KT, then uh, if I evaluate N at C2, what should that give me? It should give me uh, twice the number of bacteria that I had in the beginning. So N of T2 should be 2 N0 on one hand. But on the other hand, it is N0 e to the power K, because this is N of T2, e to the power K T2. Uh, which is, once I cancel uh, N0, which that appears on both sides, means that E to the K T2, this must be equal to 2, right? Once we get rid of N0 here, N0 there. Well, and that does imply, in a similar way as what we did in the previous example, this implies that what I have is e to the k to the power t2 is equal to 2. And this, if I take a t2 for root of both sides, tells me that e to the k must be 2 to the power 1 over t2. Uh, and then if I go back to my expression to, for the number of bacteria at the time t, n of t is n0 e to the kt. I can write e to the kt again as e to the k to the power t. Now, if e to the k now is 2 to the power 1 over t2, I can insert it instead of e to the k. 
So n0 <clears throat> 2 to the power 1 over t2 to the power t. So this is nothing but n0 times 2 to the power t over t2. So we get a formula which does not involve uh, k at all, and this formula simply uses n0 and times the n a time it takes bacteria to double its population. And this formula coincides with uh, what we found here, right? Because in this case, uh, t2 is 1r, which is 1 over 24, so t divided by 1 over 24 is 24t. All right, so you can do various examples uh, with these formulas, uh, and that you're going to do uh, when you do uh, suggested problems in the homework. Uh, in the meantime, let's uh, supply a little bit more of a theory that we need here. Uh, so let's recall this previous example and the number of bacteria that we got. It's uh, 2 to the power 240. Uh, let's roughly estimate how big that is. Uh, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Uh, 8 is kind of close to 10. So uh, 2 to the power 240 is, roughly speaking, uh, well, I mean, it's exactly the same thing as 8 to the power 80, uh, so we can very roughly estimate that this is no more than, let's say, 10 to the power 50, and 10 to the power 50 is a humongous number, and you're multiplying it also by 10,000, by 1,000. So n of 10 is extremely huge. Uh, so if you have a bacteria population that grows exponentially, then very quickly, uh, that population is going to reach uh, an extremely large number. Uh, and in fact, in this case, there is no limit uh, to how large the bacterial population will uh, become, right? Uh, is that realistic? Uh, no. Because, uh, number one, um, the bacteria does not have infinite uh, lifespan, so... At some point, bacteria will uh, begin to die, so that will contribute to the decrease of a bacterial population. And uh, if you place a bacteria in a dish, uh, there is going to be presumably some food available to it inside the dish. And once this food is exhausted, then the bacteria cannot multiply again. Uh, it will either uh, slow down the multiplication rate, or just again begin dying because of a lack of food. Uh, likewise, there will be a lack of space. Our model, the way it is constituted right now, is not capable of accounting for this. The only thing that it knows is that the more bacteria you have, the larger is the rate of growth, and uh, there you go. So that model probably is going to be useful when the number of bacteria in a dish is not very really large and there is no question about bacterial lifespan, about the number of, uh, about the amount of food, about the space, etc. So what we want to do is we want to modify our model for the bacterial growth a little bit to account for uh, these issues. Okay, so let's um, write this down here. Uh, so clearly, uh, the linear uh, model for the bacterial growth uh, can only be accurate Uh, when the number of bacteria in a dish is relatively small. So, when n of t 
is relatively small. So let's try to make this following assumption. So let's suppose uh, I'm going to fold all these questions about limited food, space, etc. Uh, into the following statement. So suppose that the dish cannot uh, support uh, more than an M some maximum number of bacteria. Uh, so what is the implication of that? Uh, if I stick to my model saying that n of t is, m prime of t is proportional to n of t, uh, then uh, what, uh, so proportional with the coefficient k, one way in which I can account for uh, existence of this maximum number of bacteria is by assuming that the rate of growth of the population, of bacterial population, should depend uh, on the number of bacteria. So one way to account for this is going to be is to assume that the rate of growth depends on it. Uh, let's see how do we uh, decide what this dependence is going to be. Uh, let's say number one. So let's think about possible properties of K. Uh, number one. K is positive when n is less than this nm, right? Because if the number of bacteria less than nm, then the bacteria can still multiply. So the bacteria still has room to multiply if n is less than nm. Uh, number two, when n is equal to nm, the multiplication should stop. And that means that k of nm should be equal to zero. And then number three, if n is greater than nm, then what should be true about the coefficient k? Uh, the more n is larger than the maximum number of bacteria that the dish can support, the more bacteria are going to die. And if bacteria is dying, that means that the rate of growth is actually not a growth, but decay. Uh, so it must be negative. So then K of N should be less than zero, right? So bacteria 
dying is going to overcome the bacteria multiplying. So, primarily dies. Okay, so with these um, uh, choices, with these choices from one to three, uh, what would be the easiest? is the easiest expression for a k of n, for this unknown function k of n, the dependence of k on the number of bacteria uh, that I can come up with to satisfy the conditions 1 for 3. Well, Clearly, k equal to a constant is not going to work because k must depend on n. Then, uh, all right, so constant is the easiest possible type of a function. What's the next easiest type of a function? It would be a linear function. Well, what is a linear function? Something like this. k is equal to some k is zero, uh, so it's a linear function, its graph is a line, based on conditions from one to three, that line should cross zero when n is equal to nm, it should be negative when uh, n is bigger than nm, and it should be positive when n is less than nm. So you can easily convince yourself and that the reasonable expression is going to be k0 times nm minus n. If I look at this expression, and I assume that k0 is a positive number, uh, if n is equal to nm, k is 0. If n is less than nm, k is positive. If n is greater than nm, k is negative, so this would be the easiest expression that satisfies uh, 1 through 3. Uh, obviously, there can be other more complicated expressions, but this one is the easiest, and so we're going to stick uh, with it. Uh, if uh, the predictions that will come from this model do not correspond to reality, then one has to adjust this expression uh, based on experimental data uh, that maybe you get some different function, which will still have the same property, but it will behave overall in a somewhat different way. Uh, right, because it's easy to visualize some other function <clears throat> which will have the same properties that it is decreasing through nm and it is equal to, uh, so it's always decreasing, it's positive on one side of nm, negative on, on another side of nm. Uh, so if k is like that, so then our modified uh, model for bacterial growth is going to be Uh, n prime. So n prime is equal to kn. So k now is k0 nm minus n. So this again is our expression for k of n, which is previously was previously a constant. Now it's not a constant anymore. And uh, n of zero is equal to n zero. Now, obviously this uh, is not a linear equation, right? Because now I have n square in it. So it's a quadratic function. So it's not a linear equation anymore. This is a nonlinear equation. Uh, 
Uh, but not only it's non-linear, also the right-hand side is, uh, does not depend on t, on the independent variable. So it's a separable equation. Uh, right? You can easily convince yourself that it's separable because you can separate n and t. And also it's an autonomous equation. Again, because the right-hand side does not have t. So I can try to solve it as a separable equation. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to illustrate possible solutions of these equations by interpreting it as an autonomous equation, because then I can uh, sketch a phase diagram and, um, and then sketch possible solutions. Uh, so if I look at the equation that I have here, so let's consider n prime equal to k0 nm minus n times n. Uh, if I set the right-hand side equal to 0, uh, so uh, setting k0 nm minus n times n equal to 0, what I get is that the equilibrium solutions are uh, n equal to 0 and n equal to nm. Uh, not surprising, because if I have no bacteria in the dish, then there are never going to be any bacteria in the dish. If n is initially 0, it's going to stay equal to 0, unless I introduce some bacteria in there. And likewise, if I have a number of bacteria equal to a maximum number of bacteria, then there is no reason to the number of bacteria to grow uh, or to decay, you, you have maximum number of bacteria, and then the bacteria is happy. So those are two constant solutions in time. Uh, so then if I draw my phase diagram, I'm going to plot uh, the equilibrium solutions on it. So 0 and... Uh, n max. And then what would I know about n prime? If n is less than 0, uh, then this factor is positive. This factor is positive. Uh, k0 is positive, so the number of bacteria is going to be increasing. But in this case, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete the part of the axis that corresponds to n being less than zero because this part of the axis is not uh, physical, right? It's not biologically relevant. There are no negative number of bacteria in a dish. So n less than zero is meaningless. Uh, so if n is between zero and nm, then this is positive, this is positive, this is positive. So n prime is positive. And when n gets larger than n m, n is still positive, but n m minus n is negative, k0 is positive, so the product is negative. So n is going to be uh, decreasing here and increasing here. And so if I plot the typical solutions of my autonomous OD, we're going to get uh, this. So we have a constant solution when n is equal to 0. We get a constant solution when n is equal to nm. And uh, if we start with any n which is above 0 and less than nm, 
our solution is going to be increasing. So we're going to get a solution like that. And if we start with any solution, any initial data which is above NM, then the, the solution is going to be decreasing. And so what we find is that um, NM in this case is an attractor. Uh, and uh, zero is a repeller. And so if we look at the uh, regime when n is between zero and nm, the number of bacteria is always going to increase. So multiplication in this case Uh, is going to dominate, right? Always some bacteria are born, some are dying. So in this regime, in this region, multiplications are going to dominate. And uh, if n is above nm, then devs are going to dominate. So bacteria are happy when uh, their population is exactly NM. They're unhappy otherwise. And uh, that model now actually is much more accurate than the model that we came up with in the beginning because now it takes it into account uh, more things than just growth. And of course, you can come up with even better model if you explicitly incorporate the amount of food that is available to the bacteria, if you explicitly incorporate the space that is available to bacteria. So for example, NM, the maximum number of bacteria in the dish, can be proportional or somehow depend of the amount of food that is available to bacteria. So more realistic models will be more complicated, but uh, still they're going to be ODE type models. Uh, so modeled by equations that we are able to solve. And that means that we're able to predict with pretty good accuracy what is going to happen inside the dish. Uh, so the next time I'm going to continue with uh, other related uh, models.